Hi, I'm Christy Van Pay with Prosperity Bookkeeping, and today I am going to answer a question that we get often from the clients or prospects that are using services like Square or PayPal or other merchant card processing um, services that actually deduct their fees before depositing the funds into the merchant's bank account. So if, for instance, you sell something on Square, then Square, let's say the sale is for $50, Square is going to deduct a certain percentage from that $50 before they deposit that money into your bank account. And the problem is then that when people are entering the transactions into their QuickBooks file, if they're entering them from the bank feed, they're coming over as the net amount, so the amount minus the fees. And then if they record that to sales, then their sales appear to be less than what they actually were because those fees are not included. So the question that we get is, how do I record those transactions so that my sales are correctly stated on my income statement and I can see the fees that were withheld in a separate line? So the way that we do that, and I'm showing you in a sample company today, is um, this is the bank feed. So when you come into your QuickBooks Online and you go to the banking area, you should be in the bank feed if you have that set up to automatically sync with your bank account. And um, we'll just use this deposit here as an example. So let's say that A Rental is a merchant card processing service like Square that takes away the fees before they deposit the funds into your account. So what you would do is you're actually going to have to go into your Square account and you're going to have to pull the report for that batch. So they call their deposits batches or a batch deposit report. So you're going to pull the report for that batch so that you can see what the gross sales were and how much the fees were. And once you have those two numbers, you can then enter this transaction on your books. So we would click this and you're actually going to need a vendor for that particular service. So if we're going to use Square, for instance, I want a Square vendor. So I'm just going to type in here Square and it's going to say, do you want to add? Because they're not already in my database. So I'm going to add that. And because I want a vendor and a customer called Square, I want to designate the difference between the two because it might not let me um, have two with the same name otherwise. So I'm just going to put a little parenthesis or squiggly here behind it with a V in it, meaning vendor. And I'm going to select that the type is vendor. Um, and then I'm going to want a customer for Square. So because this is a deposit, this particular side of it is going to be from the customer. So I'm actually going to type Square again. But this time I'm going to put a squiggly with a C for customer behind it. So the um, fees are associated with the vendor because you're paying Square or whoever it is to use that service. And then the actual deposit is going to go under the customer because it's money coming into your bank account. So we'll save that. Okay. So we're going to record this to Square the customer. And I actually am going to have to click on this split button here because that's going to allow me to have more than one line. So on the first line, I would put this to my income account, whatever that happens to be. In this case, it's sales of product, but whatever your sales account is. And if you need to split it out because you're selling multiple different types of things, you can do that here as well. And then you would put in the gross. So let's say it was actually $215 is what the sales were. And then they withheld $15 for the fees. So on the next line, I'm going to choose square vendor. And I'm going to put that to um, merchant account fees or credit card fees or bank service fees, whatever category you use to record credit card processing fees. So I'm not sure what they have set up here. Let's see if they have anything at all. Probably bank charges. So we'll just use bank charges because it's there, but you can do whatever you want to do. And then here, this is going to be a negative amount. So this would be the amount of the fees as a negative so that in the end, my difference is zero. So now what it's saying is you had $215 in sales, 15 of it was charged to you for fees, and your deposit net was $200. So that's how you would record those. Now, one thing that I want to add to this video is I know that a lot of these services have um, an integration with QuickBooks Online that you can set up so that they will sync automatically to your QuickBooks. 
I highly advise you to either not use that feature or to consult with a bookkeeper or an accountant who is familiar with how the sync works with QuickBooks because um, they're not great integration. They weren't necessarily built very well and sometimes they create more of a mess than anything. So I, I, would, I would highly advise if you do wanna have them syncing back and forth that you consult with an expert. Um, otherwise, this is how you can do it from the bank feed fairly easily without having to worry about anything getting messed up on your books. So, excuse me, so if you have any questions, by all means, reach out to us. You can reach us at 920-309-6660, or you can visit our website at prosperitybookkeeping.net. Thank you.